Hey everybody, this is Mike. Welcome back to my shop. Um, got a job here that come through the door of the shop today and I figured I uh, haven't done a video in a while so I figured I'd uh, do a video on it. Um, this is a 205, an, an NP New Process 205 uh, transfer case housing. Um, these are really sought after. They're like through the late 60s, 70s, even up into the 80s um, vehicles. They're really sought after because they're a gear driven transfer case. Um, this gentleman that brought it to me is local. Um, he's building a rock buggy, and so he's converting this into a doubler. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with that, what it does is it mates the range box of a new process 203 that's actually chain, chain driven, but it, re it mates the range box to the transfer to the 205, and it gives you the one to one. Uh, two to one, which is the 205 normally has, or you can activate the low range into the range box and have a four to one. Um, so it, it has it has some uh, advantages for heavy vehicles and even specific to rock crawling and so forth. So um, anyway, I figured it'd be it figured it'd be a good idea to uh, to, to videotape this one. Uh, this this one has the small input bearing, uh, 80 millimeter. So I believe this was found on like the 10. 23 and 27 spline um, inputs and we're boring it out to the 6210 I believe it is yes the 6210 bearing which is 90 millimeter um, which is common on the uh, larger input was the 29 31 and 32 spline so um, I'll go ahead and bring the camera in here and kind of show you while I take some measurements um, I'm also going to remove these couple of pipe plugs, these couple of half inch pipe plugs so that I can mount this flat on the mill table and uh, then we'll get to setting it up on the All right, mill. so we're going to uh, take a couple measurements here before I get too far into it. Um, grab the old uh, telescoping gauge or snap gauge, whatever you want to call it. Now when you use these <coughs> Um, it kind of it kind of takes a little bit of time to develop a feel. But what you want to do is you want to s offset it slightly in whatever bore you're measuring. You want to offset it just a little bit, snug the thumb screw, then roll it through the uh, in an arc to get a true bore reading. Then go ahead and take your measurement with your uh, micrometer. Um, so I'm, let's see if this will show up. If you just stick it down in straight and, measure, and mark it and pull it up, it's going to be off because your, your, your chances of finding the exact outside diameter and holding it exactly parallel or per, excuse me, perpendicular in that bore is going to be slim to none. So by offsetting it, snugging it, and then roll it through, now we can go ahead and Take a measurement and know it's gonna and feel comfort confident it's accurate. I, I like to go two out of three. So that is three point one four nine about eight. Three point one four nine eight, roughly. Now I'll go ahead and take another reading and double check it. Actually, that didn't feel that didn't feel right. Kind of skipped as it come out. It didn't feel like it drug through the arc there. So now we'll go ahead and check it again. And that one's right at 3.150. This is in inches. I uh, prefer to work in the met in the uh, English system rather than the metric, so it's easy enough to convert. And that one's 3.15, well, 
nine on forceful right front in the middle. 3.1499. So let's see what that calculates out to. 3.1499 times 25.4. Ah, that's pretty much 80 millimeter, 80.00746. So that is 80 millimeter on the money. Okay, now we'll go ahead and measure the bearing. Let's see what we come okay. up with. That one's 3.5412 and 5, 3.5425. So let's shoot for a bore. Let's give it between, let's give it around seven, seven ten thousandths, um, a little over half a thou. So let's shoot for 3.5417. Yeah, seven to between six and eight to ten thousandths. So we need to remove just under four hundred, about three hundred ninety, three hundred ninety-two thousandths, or three hundred ninety. Yeah, three hundred ninety-two thousandths. So we need to remove. So let's go ahead and get this locked down. Let's set our bore gauge now to this measurement. And then we will get this over on the mill and set it up. Probably clamp it on the sides through these couple of holes here. And then uh, we'll get our bore gauge set up and then get our boring bar set up. All right, so uh, again, I was able to clamp through the, the uh, shift fork hole, the output hole over here for the uh, front output and I've got a uh, 246 block set up over here with a coupler and my clamp. Now one thing I will mention here when you're setting up these clamps um, you like to be a little bit toe down so you want to have if you have your toe up on these clamps like say for example like that it can actually shift your work and your work will want to crawl out from underneath the clamp. But if you have the toe, if you have the heel of the clamp and the toe down, it's the, point of, the highest point of contact is right there at the toe and that's going to pull the work straight down and won't allow it to walk. So I've kind of guesstimated on where center is here just um, for setup. And then we'll go ahead and uh, find the actual center and zero out the DRO. So I've got it clamped pretty rigidly here in three, three spots. Shouldn't get any vibrations, shouldn't get any movement at all. Okay, so let's um, put an edge finder, do it roughly, and then we'll get a coaxial indicator. All right, so we're going to go ahead and I just put an edge finder in here for the time being. We'll see, we'll get it fairly close. So we're watching it, watching it, boom, it just kicks. And zero out my Y. Get it wobbling again. And come over, it just trues up and just kicks. Now we're gonna go half of Y. That should be right there, dead center in my Y. Now let's go ahead and move over in the X axis. There's zero of my X. And 
half of my X. There's my rough center. Okay, I've got my uh, coaxial indicator here, and I've just got it in a 3 8 inch collet. Let's go ahead and get that centered up in there. I'll just use a couple of nuts and a stud to hold this. Snug that down just a tad. There we go. thousand soft on my there we go looks like we were one thousandth hey we're right on the money there we were Three thousandths off on the X and one thousandths off on the Y. So there's our there's our center. All right, so I'm using my uh, three-inch Criterion boring head here, and I just recently picked up a couple of these Mesa um, boring head attachments, and I really like these. I've got a two. I've got one for my little smaller two-inch Criterion. And this one for my three inch has a three quarter shanks. It works, I mean, it's, it's, they're really slick. They've got two shafts in there. They lock in solid. Um, there's no way of it turning. So uh, I think I've found my new, one of my new favorite attachments when it comes to um, boring attachments. So this should barely clear if my math is right. Yep, barely clears. So we will uh, back it out to Make a clearance cut. Get our thumb wheel screwed up in there to where it'll kick the power feed. PMs down. We're cutting cast iron, so it's about 60 to 70 surface feet. So let's take. Uh, we're using inserts, so let's say 280. Try setting it down around. With a back gear, set it about 100 or so. 
Now, we're around about uh, 150. So, yeah, okay. Let's uh, go ahead now. and get the initial setting and start cutting. Tables down here. There we go. Okay. Yeah, we'll set it on about for the first initial cuts here. Let's go ahead and set it on uh, three thousand. All right, we've got a good, solid, consistent cut going around there now. I've got my. Uh, screw on my boring head, on my, bo on my boring bar here, zeroed out. So we're going to make this cut, take a measurement, and that will give us our baseline so we can calculate off of that. Okay, it looks like a very nice finish we're getting with that uh, how rigid that mesa tool is there so let's go ahead and take a couple measurements and get our starting point okay so I made my second pass at 50 thousandths and I come up 99 six so, or 99 yes yeah, six so I'm four ten thousandths off on my uh, on, the, on, the, on one revolution, I'm four ten thousandths of an inch. So that could be as simple as if I was right on the mark or, you know, half, half on and half off the mark with my marks lining up. So at least gives me a good baseline. I haven't used, I haven't bored anything for a while, so I wanted to get back in a feel for it with a couple passes. So um, I'll go ahead and advance it and take another, um, take another, Fifty thousandths. Let's see where that lands. Us. All right. So, in order to just kind of experiment with some surface finishes here, I took a little bit lighter cut this time and sped the spindle speed up to about two and a half, about two fifty, and I dropped the uh, to three thousandths per revolution, and I got a really nice surface finish there. And, oh, and I took a lighter. I think I took about 25,000, so really nice surface finish there. So I think that's where I want to land with my final cut, my final pass rather. So let's see where we're lying now. So I've taken exactly 300 thousandths off from my beginning. Exactly 300 thousandths off my, my initial cut. So I think I'm going to take 50 and then I'll take the last 20 in one pass.
Yeah, nice surface finish there. All right, so taking that final measurement, I took it three times. I get two, the same thing twice. 3.5191, so I'm 226 ten thousandths off my target. So I think I'll uh, adjust this to 22, 22 thousandths. All right, here is our final cut. See how she does. I've Spread it out like this, about 250, and I dropped it to one and a half thou per revolution. So, we're taking a really fine cut here. We're taking 22 thousandths off. This should be our. I got my dial bore gauge set up. Um, so, we'll see what it reads. On the final pass here. Four ten thousandths. About four tenths a month. So I'd end up being, if I was shooting for seven thousandths, so I'm about a thousandth off of my bearing. So that's a good press fit. A little bit snugger than I wanted it, but I don't know that I dare take another pass. All right, probably can't hear that, but that's the cleanup pass. And it barely making a little bit of a mark a little bit of a groove so I'm probably only taking half a thou off but I think that might be all I need so so there's the final pass oh it's a good surface finish I'm going to run just a slight, so I'm run my burring, deburring tool around that. Just take a and I'll run some emery around it as well. Corner off of there. And that is about what we want right there. So that's in that square. All right. Good there. I'll go ahead and pull it off the uh, mill table and get her cleaned All up. All right, let's go ahead and grab my wrench here and we'll get this broken down and get it off the mill, cleaned up. Actually uh, locked down pretty good, and really had no vi even when I put my hand on it, no vibrations whatsoever. So that's probably what contributed a good share to the good surface finish there.
All right, that, uh, that pretty much concludes uh, boring out a input bearing bore for a new process 205 transfer case. So uh, it's all roughly cleaned up. You'll have to soak it in a solvent tank, but it's roughly cleaned up and ready for the uh, owner to pick it up. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch. And if you found this uh, video informative, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And uh, hopefully stay tuned for more. I got a few other projects I'm getting ready to work on. Um, haven't posted a vi video in a while, but I think I've got a couple here uh, coming up. So I appreciate it and thank you very much.